exaggeration remains. And why is it that a man does not do or say, give or take, just as much as is needed or reasonable or justifiable in a given situation, but frequently so much more or less? Precisely because an unconscious process is released in him that runs its course without the aid of reason and therefore falls short of or exceeds the degree of rational motivation. This phenomenon is so uniform and so regular that we can only call it instinctive, though no one in this situation likes to admit the instinctive nature of his behavior. I am therefore inclined to believe that human behavior is influenced by instinct to a far higher degree than is generally supposed, and that we are prone to a great many falsifications of judgment in this respect, again as a result of an instinctive exaggeration of the rationalistic standpoint. Instincts are typical modes of action. And wherever we meet with uniform and regularly recurring modes of action and reaction, we are dealing with instinct, no matter whether it is associated with a conscious motive or not. Just as it may be asked whether man possesses many instincts or only a few, so we must also raise the still unbroached question of whether he possesses many or few primordial forms or archetypes of psychic reaction. Here we are faced with the same difficulty I mentioned above. We are so accustomed to operating with conventional and self-evident concepts they were no longer conscious of the extent to which they are based on archetypal modes of perception. Like the instincts, the primordial images have been obscured by the extraordinary differentiation of our thinking. Just as certain biological views attribute only a few instincts to man, so the theory of cognition reduces the archetypes to a few logically limited categories of understanding. In Plato, however, an extraordinarily high value is set on the archetypes as metaphysical ideas, as paradigms or models, while real things are held to be only the copies of these model ideas. Medieval philosophy, from the time of St. Augustine, from whom I have borrowed the idea of archetypes, down to Mellip Branch and Bacon, still stands on a platonic footing in this respect. But in scholasticism, we find the notion that archetypes are natural images engraved on the human mind, helping it to form its judgments. Thus Herbert and Cherbury says, natural instincts are expressions of those faculties which are found in every normal man, through which the common notions touching the internal conformity of things, such as the cause, means and purpose of things, the good, bad, beautiful, pleasing, etc., are brought into conformity independently of discursive thought. From the cart and mallow branch onward, the metaphysical value of the idea or archetype steadily deteriorated. It became a thought, an internal condition of cognition, as clearly formulated by Spinoza. By idea, I understand a conception of the mind which the mind forms by reason of its being a thinking thing. Finally, Kant reduced the archetypes to a limited number of categories of understanding. Schopenhauer carried the process of simplification still further, while at the same time endowing the archetypes with an almost platonic significance. In this all too summary sketch, we can see once again that same psychological process at work which disguises the instincts under the cloak of rational motivations and transforms the archetypes into rational concepts. It is hardly possible to recognize the archetype under this guise. And yet the way in which man inwardly pictures the world is still, despite all differences of detail, as uniform and as regular as his instinctive actions. Just as we have been compelled to postulate the concept of an instinct, determining or regulating our conscious actions, so, in order to account for the uniformity and regularity of our perceptions, we must have recourse to the correlated concept of a factor determining the mode of apprehension. It is this factor which I call the archetype or primordial image. The primordial image might suitably be described as the instinct's perception of itself, or as the self-portrait of the instinct, in exactly the same way as consciousness is an inward perception of the objective life process. Just as conscious apprehension gives our actions form and direction, so unconscious apprehension through the archetype determines the form and direction of instinct. If we call instinct refined, then the intuition which brings the instinct into play, in other words, the apprehension by means of the archetype, must be something incredibly precise. Thus, the Yukamoth must carry within it an image, as it were, of the situation that triggers off its instinct. This image enables it to recognize the yucca flower and its structure. The criterion of the all or none reaction proposed by Rivers has helped us to discover the operation of instinct everywhere in human psychology. And it may be that the concept of the primordial image will perform a similar service with regard to acts of intuitive apprehension. Intuitional activity can be observed most easily among primitives. There we constantly meet with certain typical images and motifs which are the foundations of their mythologies. These images are autothonous and occur with great regularity. 
Everywhere we find the idea of a magic power or substance, of spirits and their doings, of heroes and gods and their legends. In the great religions of the world, we see the perfection of those images, and at the same time, their progressive incrustation with rational forms. They even appear in the exact sciences as the foundation of certain indispensable auxiliary concepts such as energy, ether, and the atom. In philosophy, Bergson affords an example of the revival of a primordial image with his conception of dure creatrice, which can be found in Proclus and in its original form in Heraclitus. Analytical psychology is daily concerned, in the normal and sick alike, with disturbances of conscious apprehension caused by the admixture of archetypal images. The exaggerated actions due to the interference of instinct are caused by intuitive modes of apprehension actuated by archetypes and all too likely to lead to over-intense and often distorted impressions. Archetypes are typical modes of apprehension, 